as most of you guys know, um, Tremaine Emery decided recently to step down from Supreme. Uh, news that kind of shook my side of the internet because it felt like only recently did he get hired at Supreme as creative director. Um, it was actually a really, really big deal that he got hired there because of his, you know, relative inexperience in fashion and the fact that he was somebody quite well known within the scene and whatnot and he friendship with Virgil and worked with Ye and stuff and Frank Ocean. It seemed like a big deal when it actually happened. Um, and it seemed like he had a lot of kind of interesting things in the works that he kind of wanted to do. Anyway, long story short, it, I didn't really see the kind of break happening so soon. I think some other people who were maybe paying close attention did. And some f Supreme fans were basically saying that the brand had somewhat fallen off ever since he joined, which I think is a little bit unfair because it's really difficult to kind of pinpoint what he actually was responsible for and what he actually had a hand in designing. If Unless you were in, you know, in-house at Supreme, you knew what he did because usually creative director roles are a bit broad and sometimes vague in terms of their actual job description some creative directors you know know how to draw some of them don't um some of them just lead some of them are, are, are good um some of them are good delegates some of them are good leaders some of them are good hands-on you know um de designers it really just depends on the person and the role that they're in but that being said um a lot of supreme fans weren't too happy with his appointment maybe it might have to do with the fact that they weren't really big fans of denim tears and they thought maybe he'd bring a across some of that aesthetic into supreme who really knows either way some of those people weren't surprised when he did eventually end up walking away now when i made the clip or when i spoke about it previously in my last podcast i was saying that i was hoping that it was more so a performance issue as much as that would have been embarrassing for tremaine because it would mean that you weren't up to scratch and you wouldn't you weren't able to basically um do i think which is kind of an easy job if you already have a brand is to basically be the creative director supreme if you already have your own brand you know basically lending a hand and adding ideas to and expounding on wherever they already have um, at Supreme when all of it just requires you to do t-shirt graphics and hoodies and whatnot and some jeans and jackets it shouldn't be too difficult but at a time when I mentioned it, I said it it would be better for him if it was just like a, okay cool it didn't work out lesson learned you know this is my lessons learned this is what the lessons I've kind of learned during the time that I was there that could help other designers coming up bloody blah, blah 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 and I was kind of hesitant to say that I, I hoped it wouldn't be something that he'd try and blame on institutional racism or systemic racism or whatever that sort of stuff, right? Because that would then just make it an unfortunate incident and it would kind of div it would kind of take away from the role and what he kind of did there and obviously the fantastic full winter collection and it would turn the conversation into a whole different thing. Well, unfortunately, Tremaine did um, explain a little bit more um, you know a day later actually what actually went on and he provided some information as to what went on so big up to the um, person that commented on the original video I took a screenshot of the comment here but they took a screen grab or they copied I think the text from one of the articles where he basically explains the exact reason why he left Supreme so this is courtesy of the article it says in an article from business of fashion that was posted an hour ago Tremaine alleges systemic racism on Supreme's part Supreme's creative director Tremaine Emery is exiting the streetwear giant after a year and a half in a row over allegations that systemic racism was at play within the structure of Supreme according to a letter of resignation seen by a BOF a representative of Supreme confirmed the departure Emery was Supreme's first ever creative director and first major appointment since it was acquired by North Face owner VF Corp in 2020 in a deal that valued the streetwear brand at 2.1 billion Previously, creative decision making was steered primarily by founder James Jebbia. The news that Emery was leaving, the label was first reported by streetwear title Complex, citing anonymous sources. Emery's decision to leave Supreme centered around senior management inability to communicate with him about the cancellation of a long planned fashion collaboration with major Black American artist Alpha Jaffa. Um, offer and visibility, offer and offer full visibility to the reason behind it. Sorry, according to Emery's re resignation letter this caused a quote it says this caused me great amount of distress as well as the belief that systemic racism was at play within the structures of supreme 
The company said the collaboration hasn't been cancelled, though it has yet to be released. That's a hilarious line, isn't it? It's not cancelled, but it's not coming out. <laughs> um, while we take these concerns seriously, we strongly disagree with Tremaine's characterization of our company and the handling of the Alpha Jaffa project, which has not been cancelled. This was the first time in 30 years where the company brought in a creative director, and we are disappointed not work out with Tremaine, and we wish him the best of luck going forward. So basically, it's saying this is the first time in 30 years anyone's ever accused of a racism. Um, and also best of luck pal i mean we, we wish you well um so tremaine is basically blaming systemic racism for the reason why it didn't work out as supreme to me that's hella disappointing because i feel like you know accusing supreme of racism is like accusing Berghain of homophobia it's an insane hill to die on really really is an insane hill to die on especially once you dig into a bit of the details so let's dig into some of the details so if you actually go to Tremaine Emery's Instagram account he provided some flipping context as to what went on some screen flipping you know um, some receipts as the kids say on the internet of his text with none other than flipping James Jebbia right the very elusive James Jebbia like we hardly hear James Jebbia talk you hardly see him anywhere he's very private but somehow in 2023 we've gotten you know screenshots of text messages between Tremaine and James Jebbia absolutely hilarious but the first sort of indication as to what you know the temperature was with Tremaine and what happened with Supreme was this insane picture that he took that he thought that was a flex that i thought was absolutely hilarious which is this picture here it, it features a picture of an individual that has um the book white fragility it may be tremaine himself and um, tucked him into tucked into his jeans um you know in front of a very nice belt probably some very trendy tra trousers and whatever it may be and the caption is what really really gets me right the caption says as follows so before I get into what I've been forced to speak on in these next few posts about Supreme New York, I'm recommending y'all read this book for a better understanding of what systemic racism is and how it affects people of all colours who live in this white male patriarchal system that was built to only benefit white heterosexual males since the inception of America and even further back into European colon colon colonialism. Sorry. And the book itself that he's referencing is a book called White Fragility by a lady called, um, oh, what's her name? Something, Angelo something, I forgot her name, but it doesn't matter. I've actually read this book, right? I'm actually one of the losers out there that spent their time reading this book when it, event, when it actually did drop. I think it dropped, if I'm not mistaken, around the same time of the riots in america um you know via the death of um the unfortunate death of flipping um or murder actually of george floyd and this book came around the same sort of time and it's funny that he says if you want to get a better understanding of systemic racism read this book because this actual book if you actually read it it reads more like a hr manual um for corporations to sort of get a handle on like understanding the black lived experience which is hilarious because the author herself isn't black she's white white as fuck so this white as fuck woman wrote this book um as an effort to sort of like you know allow white people to maybe understand um the plight of black people and how hard it is for us allegedly to maneuver within the corporate world um and essentially paints us as perpetual victims that's what we are in this book we're just perpetual victims we have no you know we're, we're always in the state we're always in a state of in a state sorry of anxiety and trepidation we don't know how to move how to talk how to function um without our masters kind of telling us what to do and making things all right by giving us you know swanky jobs with nice titles and nice salaries that's basically what the book kind of basically says it's absolutely hilarious so using this book as a framework um to sort of you know to sort of launch uh, as a launch pad for your argument told me everything about the issues at hand personally that was going on there you know again like i said it's a white woman read the, you know read this book and then now you're saying that this book is the best description of systemic racism anyway we continue the next screenshot features here um a screenshot that features um i'm guessing tremaine with a few other people in a uh, group chat maybe james jebby is included also and from what we've been led to assume here if you go back to the original screenshot here there's a section in this caption where tremaine says he's basically been forced into it's like he didn't want this to be known he kind of wanted to leave under the you know he kind of he kind of wanted to leave under the banner of um creative differences or whatever it may have been i don't think there's a reason but he wanted it to be something that you know everyone knew that he stepped down he wasn't fired 
But he also, I don't think, never went to explain why. I don't think his goal was ever to explain so far. I don't know if this is true. But he did leave a bit of a hint here. He said in this original caption of the Right Fragility book, he said, um, so before I get into what I've been forced to speak on, so he's basically felt like somebody has forced him to speak on it. So maybe somebody leaked the information as to why he got fired. And then he was asked to clarify. And then that made him have to kind of, you know, address the reasons why he eventually ended up walking away, not getting fired, sorry, walking away. So this might be the reason why. So we got a bit of context there. So if we go to this screenshot here, or this, sorry, this post, um, you see here a screen grab of some messages. Uh, so you see a, a screen grab of a SMS message group chat he's in, which features a DM from Instagram from Complex Style, which has reached out to him to ask him certain things about what happened when in terms of leaving. And the caption says as follows. So over the last few weeks after resigning, so so over the last few weeks after resigning, I fought tooth and nail into the 25th hour with C-suite of Supreme to align with them on a statement to press, explaining that I left Supreme because of systemic racial issues. The company has from the treatment of Alpha Jaff. Okay, this sentence is crazy. Uh, I left Supreme because of systemic racial issues. The company has from the treatment of Alpha Jaffa Collab to the makeup of the design studio that has less than 10% minorities working when the brand is largely based off black culture. Ask someone called Julian Can, ask someone called Kyle Dem and Alex Dietrich. So he's actually tagging and naming people, right? First and last names, crazy. They were all on the text messages and Kyle was on the calls until I told him I can't align on a statement that doesn't cite systemic racism and was asked to tell Complex a racist incident didn't happen and if they report that that we can't put out a statement with you because that will be the story. I refuse to. Kyle said we will call you back on Tuesday night and y'all never did so it's tragically ironic y'all three left me hanging. So I'm guessing those guys all work for Supreme julian kyle and this alex person that's what i'm basically getting from this kyle said he we will call you back on tuesday night and y'all never did so it's tragically ironic y'all free left me hanging kyle on that call you said you want uh you said we want you to tell your story with us you're the best storyteller i know well you're gonna get a story so from what we can assume here from this caption Tremaine was working with Supreme to sort of like draft a press release to put out there as to why he left Supreme. But the actual real reason why he felt like he left Supreme was because of systemic racism. Supreme clearly didn't agree with that characterization, so they couldn't come to a agreement. In between that time, the news comes out anyway, they have to confirm it. But then I guess complex style here in this actual post, if you see here, they reach out to Tremaine a couple of times. He doesn't reply, but they reach out to him here and say, hey, um, we've received reports from verified sources that you left Supreme. We wanted to be able to confirm it or deny it. Thank you. He didn't reply. Then they got another post here. Complex reached out to him and said, hey, we want to follow up. A source has confirmed that you are leaving Supreme because of a racist incident. We are moving forward with the story and would love for you to comment. Even if it's off the record, we wouldn't cite you as a source. So clearly the word had already got out out there. So he, they were trying to get in front of it. They couldn't. They couldn't agree. Then the word gets out there because people in streetwear are fucking chatty catties and gossips and stuff. So it got out there one way or the other. And then they were trying to make it right. And then it continues here. Supreme, sorry, Complex reaches out again. Um, no, they, no, they, uh, they reach, that's the same one I said, I think. Oh, yeah, uh, that's the same one, sorry. And he, he obviously posts that on the text message thread. Then he says, case in point, that's today. Been thinking a bunch, let me call. Da, da, da. So you don't call him back. So essentially, he probably feels a little bit like, you know, he got his arm bent around his back because he didn't, you know, they couldn't agree on the press release. It then gets out and then Supreme aren't willing to sort of like stand behind it or endorse it or any break of lucky. I guess it makes whatever it makes, right? Then the last one we got here is the funnier one. This is the best one. This is courtesy of, of Tremaine again, the last kind of post that kind of adds more context to why he stepped down for Supreme. Um, it features a screen grab of a text message that he has with James Jebbia, the founder of Supreme. And the caption says as follows. So Tuesday after I resigned, James Jebbia pulled up to my crib. The text above was sent by him after leaving my crib. And we talked about why I resigned. The head of HR was there and a woman from VF Corp was listening in on Zoom. Imagine that scene. 
imagine you invite James Jabeger into your house, um, somebody else from HR, and there's a representative of VF Corp on the fucking phone as you guys are speaking, on loudspeaker, on the table, as you guys are speaking about your issues you're having. What an insane scenario. Um, James admitted he should have talked to me about the cancelling images for the Jaffa collab because one of a few black employees who ironically has quit Supreme before I did, partially because of his treatment due to systemic issues by Supreme, his words not mine, in the design studio, didn't think that we should be putting out this collab because of the depiction of black men were being hung and that the freed slave golden picture with his whiplashes on the back. James agreed there should have been more discourse about the project with me being that I was the creative director and that I am black. <laughs> that little reminder. Um, Supreme statement in BOF article is a lie to hide the systemic racism that lies deep within Supreme and almost all white-owned corporations. That's hilarious, man. So why did you take the job then if, if they're all white man bad? This is anyway, I went to work with Supreme to change these things and instead I told... I was told I was racially charged, emotional, and using the wrong forum by bringing up systemic racism in a meeting when I was asked if we should work with a black female artist while this Jaffa project was secretly shut down without anyone talking to me. That's why I resigned. James agreed with all the my points and said he's going to change Supreme. Um, he's got a stand on what he said to me and the whole C-suite and head of design got a stand on what was said bloody hell he's even he's even tagging erin erin's been at supreme i know her because she's like an og she had a brand called made me he's even tagging he's even tagging erin fucking hell erin made me kyle julian some person called electromagnetic studio i got a full clip of receipts plus you can all talk to what other people of color that work in the studio about their experience as it's as valid as mine i just have a platform to speak that most people of color in america don't have. <laughs> ah, this nigga thinks he's on CNN okay cool and then the screenshot of the text message says as follows you got James Jebbia saying here um, to him thank you for having the time to talk to you um, you spoke all truths and opened my eyes to the important issues that have to be addressed it was great seeing you too and he says thank you James I'm so happy that we talked great seeing you as well so, so you got fired from a systemic, systemically racist company you then invite the systemically racist founder of this company to your home and you're giving him all these like thank yous and licking his ass on a goodbye on a text message it's a bit it's a bit weird isn't it if that's the energy you have really but hey what do i know um it continues um alpha jeffa nba young boy damn that's how it, sh it should have happened exactly i don't know anyway cool so that's basically the the kind of crux of where we're at right um he thinks that Supreme is a systemically racist brand. So let's start off by showing it from Tremaine's angle. I can understand if you're Tremaine going to Supreme and feeling like you could get all the shit off that you wanted to get off somewhere like there. Because over the years, Supreme have always been really cool about, you know, injecting some socially, racial, politically charged pieces here and there without really saying much about them maybe it's for a piece of artwork i've got a particular hat that i've I've worn into a ground that says king of kings with the african continent on the front of it it looks pretty cool you know that says different things and there's there's kind of you know mlk t-shirts and malcolm x t-shirts and all this malarkey right they've been very good at doing it over the years so i can understand why tremaine when he accepted the job could think hey maybe i could get off the same things i'm thinking about working on dylan tears but other elevated ideas on this sort of super big platform um, because of what they did before and their track record right cool that makes a lot of sense i can also understand why he'd get pissed off about an idea he floated about having a collaboration with arthur jaffa and then not being told that it got cancelled because they weren't comfortable with doing it they just kind of acted like it wasn't cancelled and then at the last minute he realizes it is even though he's working on it at, in real time and it kind of makes you feel like your position has been undermined especially if you come in as a creative director you kind of feel like the creative director has the final say so um, with the exception of James Jebbia, right? They're sort of like a real senior figure when it comes to design and maybe collaborations and ideas and stuff. So him not being informed um, of those decisions, I get why it doesn't sit right. I can definitely understand that. That really would annoy me also. But all of that being said, and also, you know, all, of, all that being said, I think personally to paint Supreme 
as being systemically racist because they didn't agree with your ideas or your one or two ideas is incredibly incredibly out of order like that's extremely going over the top personally for me that's a little bit um you know that's a bit little bit ott i feel like if 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 tremaine was as creative as maybe he thinks he is he should have been able to figure out a way to put that idea out and make other people in the studio agree that that was that was a cool idea do you know what i mean like you, you should have figured out another way to sort of like tackle that idea um if the first kind of one kind of got shut down i don't think that was you know you could just immediately after them cancelling the one idea that you don't like immediately start crying and start painting them out to be systemic racist that's a little bit too much a little bit too cheeky in that regard then there's also fundamentally the issue that i have with it in general is that i feel like if you're gonna go work for a company like that a corporation in general and especially you have to put everything in context supreme got bought by vf corp essentially they have you know james jebier is an employee of his own company he has bosses to answer for um, he has targets to meet and shit you have to be mindful of those things will play a bigger role nowadays than it would maybe in the past so maybe in the past he could have got off the alpha jaffa thing with no real pushback because supreme was kind of you know semi-independent but now that it's not it's going to be a lot more hard. It's going to be harder, sorry, to get off some of those ideas. And I just think in terms of just, a, you know, just looking at it plainly, as great as Arthur Jaffer is, as much as I respect his work and I think he's, you know, super interesting artist, he's not incredibly well known either. So even if you want to just look at it from a purely commercial point of view, and if Supreme, if it, if you if it, if you believe the reports out there that, you know, they're not, they're not meeting targets and sales figures, all this malarkey, then it could be understandable why they'd be a little bit hesitant and resistant, you know, on giving such an unknown quote unquote artist a chance at a collaboration when they're not sure that super lead, super racially charged depiction of art, wherever it may be a representation on that, on that piece would sell or just the fact that he's not well known wouldn't sell either. Because I think back to some of the older artist collaborations that Supreme has done over the years. And I think, Arthur Jaffa maybe might be as might be even less well known than someone like a Shaniko Jarvis, who wasn't that well known either. I don't think, unless you're like plugged into the scene, the photographer Shaniko Jarvis who did some you did some stuff for there before. I think she did the picture. I think she might have took the picture of like Lee Scratch Perry or something back in the day. People like that were quite you know not that well known. There might be a few graffiti writers. I think of someone like J A One, who I'm a big fan of. Um, I, I still got um the hoodie actually. With, with it in his font written but again that's somebody that you had to kind of be tapped into but i imagine if you like supreme you probably know who ja1 is but i think arthur jeffer may have come in dead last in terms of notoriety and name recognition so maybe off just that alone they could say hey probably not him choose somebody else and there's a whole slew of other you know african-american artists that he could have picked from that will have maybe a a bigger profile that it might have worked better with especially if their artwork isn't as you know racially charged as maybe arthur jaffa is or isn't as provocative as his stuff is maybe i don't really know either way i think throwing your toys out of the pram over them just pushing back on those two ideas is insane especially if you think about um the stuff that he was thinking of doing which kind of i think he involved i think he spoke about it here about supposedly there was this depiction of like um i think there's this right there's a there's this nas nigga album cover right and i think i saw him post on his instagram stories that he was thinking of doing something similar like this so on Nas's album nigga he's got the you know he's got a picture of himself showing his back and it's been covered you know in you know uh whip lashings that kind of spell out that kind of mark out his name you know the start of his name n so imagine doing this exact thing <laughs> collaboration if you're supreme but having it be an s or something I can understand why the people that work there in the design team were like, you know what? Maybe not, you know? Maybe not. Let's do that. Maybe that's not the, the, the thing that we want to be depicted on the first. And then if you think about Arthur Jaffa stuff, which I think I might have here, you look at some of the artwork that he does, you could also understand why Supreme maybe look at this stuff and think, you know what? This might not resonate with our customer base. Um, and it also might be something that will make a lot of people uncomfortable or it just might be something that people just won't be won't sell as well as other pieces from other artists and i also think about other things that i can remember from my fucking memory if i'm not mistaken supreme have cancelled way 
loads of fucking artist collaboration stuff over the years. One that sticks out from years ago might be Nate Lauman has this particular thing. This artist Nate Lauman has these particular sort of like um, designs he does where they where they look like gun blasts. So they look like you know somebody um, shot uh, a car or something or whatever. It's like a splash, like a flash. And if I'm not mistaken, they may have had some of those gun hole marks things on a t-shirt or a hoodie or something, and that got cancelled. I'm not too sure why it got cancelled, but I remember it did. I'm sure they've got some of that artwork in, I think, in a store somewhere, maybe in America. I forgot which one it was. It might be LA or something. But I think there was some clothing that came with that collection or, or that was made around that time that didn't get released because maybe they looked at it and thought it was too racially charged. Maybe it didn't sit well with them. But it happens quite honestly it happens often this sort of thing it's not it's not something that's like crazy that this sort of thing happens so i kind of find it insane that um tremaine would see them pushing back on these ideas that are a little bit racially charged a little bit you know edgy whatever it may be provocative and think that it was a personal thing if anything i think it would have been more of a of a design and of a design challenge really to kind of go back to the drawing board and figure out a way to sort of tell this story whatever he wants to tell um in a way that was a bit more palatable it should be a design challenge personally for me it shouldn't be something that you kind of freak out about and kind of throw your toys out of the pram about and think that you know essentially that means that the whole company is systemically racist because if you think about it really the whole reason part no, i think the whole reason sorry part of the reason why he was hired there you would imagine would be his race anyway the fact that it was a creative director's role was the first one they partly would have hired him because of that maybe because of his friendships with the people involved in the scene like i mentioned before the virgils r.i.p the kanye's and that whole clique he was coming up with the fact that he has his own brand anyway because on paper if i think he mentioned recently on his instagram denim tears is celebrating like four years of operation so it was pretty crazy to think that somebody that has no prior experience of design or fashion prior, you know, before doing his own brand, somebody that I would say is more of an ideas guy in the same way of like a Heron Preston, like, you know, these guys who have kind of known them from afar from a long time, they never struck me as like fashion dudes or like streetwear dudes in any way, shape or form. But they're very good, you know, idea guys, connectors and stuff, um, you know, just cultural guys, whatever. And they were able to kind of take that, you know that taste and kind of apply it to clothes so for him to get that role in the first place was a big deal i think right because four years of experience and then getting that role as supreme being the first ever creator director was a big deal and i think maybe race did play into him getting selected for the role that's just my personal opinion maybe i'm wrong who knows so to then get the role because of race and then get in there and complain that the place is systemically racist is a bit i don't know I'm not too sure if I buy that sort of shit, you know? I'm, I, don't, I don't really buy it. It doesn't really make any sense. Um, one thing I remember, one thing I remember, though, and I think it's true what he said there, and I think it's a missed opportunity. If there was the case that he walked into Supreme and I was like, whoa, this is a big shock. I'm going into the design studio or to the head office and there's only like less than 10% of people in here are minorities. This is odd because, you know, Supreme is sort of like, it kind of... Uh, it kind of uh, lords itself on the fact that it's a, it's a sort of multicultural brand that uses a lot of like black, brown and Asian imagery or whatever, maybe Latina, whatever that is, right? That kind of New York aesthetic, right? So it's kind of a bit strange when you go into the shops, you see all these, you know, people from all, the, all around the world, but then you go to the actual head office and it's like, it's all kind of whitewashed. I can understand why that would make him feel a bit uneasy. But I also think it's his responsibility when he was in there to sort of rewrite those balance, to rewrite that balance, sorry. Uh, or to readdress that balance and go and hire people to work underneath him or with him who maybe were from those backgrounds to maybe make things a little bit more balanced in the head office and that was maybe a missed opportunity so maybe if he was in there during that time he could have probably done that that would have been pretty good personally for me that would have been pretty nice to see but unfortunately that didn't happen for whatever reason um before i continue let me quickly jump in to see what you guys are saying here in the chat and then i'll go on to reading some of the comments that i've seen on instagram because some people have had some very interesting things to say about this sort of stuff so let me see what you guys are saying here in the chat about this um people say unprejudiced attitude uh oh yeah bigger fashion road man good to see you brother what are you saying here to me you're saying that tremaine does have a tendency to to cry racism at everything it's to a point it's hard to take his recognition seriously yeah um i'm surprised to be fair i always thought tremaine was a little bit more nuanced 
a little bit more smarter than that, like to be a little bit like I didn't think he was one of those type of guys that would cry racism and everything. But I think now having looked at it, read a few of his his interviews, I probably should have seen the signs of it over time. But I just think it's insane for him. He knows of the brand. He's been around the scene long enough for him to accuse Supreme of racism is legitimately insane. I think if it was somebody that didn't really know much about the brand and came into it kind of fresh and tried to approach Denim Tears as like a quasi fashion brand and taking that where it needs to go and didn't really have a history of being connected with the New York scene and all these kind of people around, that would make more sense. But he knows better than that. You know what I mean? He knows he's kind of out of line calling him systemically racist. So that was a bit of a shame to see. Um, Lucid Footwear said this is a hardcore hit of truth for real. Well said on this one. Thank you, Lucid. Um, seven days said he's playing racism like it's a joke. Yeah, it's it's annoying because even if there is racist, even if it, what he's saying is true, I still think there could have been more done to make it work. Like you can work within the system to kind of make some change. And plus, let's not forget, he already has his own brand in Denim Tears where he can do his own thing unapologetically unfiltered he already has half of the fucking world wearing his amazing cotton reef um ensembles right the all leather jean jeans on fucking cotton on cotton sweatshirts and um, sweatsuits and stuff he already has been able to kind of take that very um charged iconography that means so much to uh, black people in general and he's been able to kind of make you know millions off the back of that and kind of have that be super super trendy and that's something that come that comes from a real place so why not be able to take the same thinking that went into that cotton reef and maybe apply some of that same take that same ideology that same way of thinking and sort of like use those ideas to kind of you know slyly imbue them over supreme it could have been done personally it could have been done and also use the opportunity to hire some people um to kind of readdress the you know the representation stuff that you had an issue with um Uche said what company would want to sell a design of a black man being hung exactly and another thing is all on that subject which is really odd i'm surprised he was surprised about that because i remember reading some stuff online and again i'm not in america so i'm just looking at stuff from just one from the outside perspective but one thing that i've noticed in america there there is a real big issue with americans especially african americans they have a really big issue with black english people playing um you know the roles of prominent black you know black african americans in movies they have a real issue with it they sometimes they'll be like no why don't those roles go to african american actors so if that's the case and so and there's also the conversation around a lot of black people feeling like the only movies that get a big hollywood budget coming from black creatives are usually movies that depict slavery right like so basically black trauma and they hate it for the most part if you go on social media you see the conversation people hate those, those type of things so i was surprised that tremaine didn't understand that and try to further that once again by having you know these it, depicting these images of fucking you know black people being hung being whipped like like where does that stuff end what next was he gonna have like an installation in the in one of the fucking supreme stores that had like a noose hanging from the roof or something or an open casket or something like i mean all that stuff is a bit too much personally for me um especially over there where you guys don't seem to resonate or it doesn't seem to hit the same way as maybe it would maybe hit over here in terms of maybe starting a conversation and whatever it may be you guys over there are kind of over it you kind of want to move on you kind of want to depict um black excellent you kind of black excellent sorry you kind of want to lift you guys up a bit and um, maybe look back at times in, in you know in your history where you know things were a little bit better and not look back on always the bad times i don't really know but it's a strange thing to go with direction wise um it says yeah good thing um, is that Tremaine is doing well sorry Dentiers is doing well I think he should focus on it um, it's had a lot of what uh, it's had a lot of potential yeah for sure um, yeah um, Dentiers is doing fantastic that's why I think it's a missed opportunity because I feel like he could have done both he could have addressed the issues of systemic racism that he feels like exists in Supreme by working within the system and he could have also done his own version or representation of the black experience through his brand denim tears unfiltered you know what i mean like you could have done that you could have worked on both things and i personally think 
as an artist or as a creative, that ability to work on those two planes is pretty impressive. That would actually make you a far better artist going forward, personally. Being able to, you know, do stuff under some level of constraints and guidance and, you know, pushback and oversight, but then also being able to kind of flip it when needs be and kind of work, you know, untethered and free and whatnot and be able to execute on those two la levels like it's sick and the fact that you couldn't do it is a bit of a shame it says yeah i think the thing tremaine came after every brand trying to figure the find. Oh, sorry i think that the timing of tremaine came after every brand was trying to find their version of virgil so i see where you're coming from maybe it's less of a race thing and more so needed a cool kid yeah i don't know i just think the virgil thing r.i.p to the goat we have to give the guy a lot of credit say what you want to say about his designs but his ability to maneuver between these different spaces, between different organizations, different corporations, different work structures, different, you know, uh, communities, different industries, without any real issue, doesn't really get spoken about enough. Because he done it expertly, like he was able to learn the lessons of all these other people that came before him, and was able to work within these different industries without any issue, while still saying the things he wanted to say with the work that he was able to produce. Because I think fundamentally, anyway, fundamentally, let's be fair, fashion as a medium is pretty difficult, I think personally, to execute like political, societal ideas on. It's just hard. I don't know why. Maybe because intrinsically it's just fucking clothes. But it's very difficult to have something to say meaningful via the medium of clothes, especially, no, we're not just talking about fashion. We're talking about fucking streetwear type of stuff. It's just hard to do. It's really hard to do. And even more so hard to do when you're working for a corporation because Supreme, as much as I love it, it's now a corporation. They're owned basically by VF Corp. You have VF Corp overlords breathing down your neck all the time. It's very difficult to execute those ideas that you want to say something interesting on that kind of level with that amount of pressure with those sort of targets you have to meet with a massive global fan base and audience and customer it's just it's just it ne nearly impossible which is why i think him having did him tears to offset that stuff would have been incredible to kind of seem operate at the same level at the same time would have been so good going forward but you know something had to give i guess uche wouldn't it be bigger red flag if the majority of white company was going uh was going up about selling slave much exactly <laughs> exactly uche imagine if they said yes imagine look at all the look at all the stuff that crench look i'm gonna get it up actually here look at all the stuff that crenshaw skate club is going for right crenshaw skate club um is it yes no sorry crenshaw skate shop i think sorry skate club um is a company that i'm pretty sure was started by a kid that's like 20 or something right he's super young um black kid right so it's, it's an amazing little brand he's got a collaboration already with fucking with nike sb and one of their t-shirt designs got cancelled because of the you know illustrations that were on the t-shirt that maybe you know depict black people in not so good of a way and kind of harken back to some stuff that happened in the past bloody blah, blah 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 but the design was made by a black person right the whole sh the whole premise of the shop was that it was meant to you know the whole premise of the brand is that he wanted to have a brand that um represented people that looked like him because he didn't have anything out there at the time when he was coming up skateboarding that kind of you know addressed those sort of things so it comes from a real place but still nike sb couldn't do this so imagine trying to do an iconography with like you know a, a guy that's been whipped and stuff with whip scars on the back of it, it just doesn't make any sense if this t-shirt wasn't able to get made like tremaine had no chance of having his other stuff to get made you know what i mean it just doesn't make any sense personally it's a bit strange and i don't think there's anything wrong with this personally to be honest if you know that if you know the history of the brand and where all this stuff is coming from personally but again i could be wrong um uh, duh, 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 call us a racist tommy Barnes. what was he saying here cool um let's continue so i want to also see what people have been saying online because i feel like some of the responses on social media have been pretty wild to see so let's see what people have been saying here let's scroll down and look at actually his post of what he read here right let's see what he said um the post regarding james jebbia and what he said let me see the comments um <laughs> okay cool this person says uh bro screen print cl clouds on denim and thought he was a creative director okay they're not clouds first of all but hey that's still funny um another person here says 
oh okay my guy Valencia said um, I love how Supreme put in an image of a former slave with a whiplash on his back is too edgy over graphic yet they've been making t-shirts of black radicals since 2003 but then a black creative does it and it's a problem there's so many tees in the past collections that use graphics of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Che Guevara this this is how white liberals operate it's pretending to speak for individuals while actively crushing them the jargon phrases are used to box us in within pious attitudes of fake brotherhood yeah maybe some truth to that another one says white fashion industry motherfuckers liking those posts like it's their core of revolution while either doing the exact same thing or indulging in it for the bigger pieces y'all keep safe from fighting a good fight another person says <laughs> i'm sorry but you need to sit down and critically examine why you thought it would be a good or radical idea to sell images of black bodies being hung and whipped on clothing items that will mostly be worn by white people do you know the images of lynchings were sold as postcards in the late 1800s and 1900s so that white people can continue to dismantle sorry to disseminate images of black dead to their peers who weren't able to witness it listen racism is re is readily present in all aspects of this world especially corporate settings so i will not deny that you endured hardships during your tenure i know it can be stifling condescending and in unnerving um uh that aside this collaboration sounded like a terrible idea and i'm proud of the other black employee who found the courage to push back on this release i hope you will reassess your personal politics and understand why this issue was problematic to as well see i didn't understand i didn't really i didn't realize that bit because I didn't, you know, he was, he kind of doesn't write the greatest, but so I guess in the caption he said, someone that worked within Supreme, another black person, pushed back on the idea. They weren't comfortable with it. Yet Tremaine kind of processed that, still has systemic racism, even though a fellow black person said, hey, that, that, that idea kind of sucks and isn't the greatest. Then he decided to take that, run to the internet, and in the hopes of looking like a victim and everyone will feel bad for him and kind of like, you know, gather around and kind of give him a pat on the back and rub his back and shit. Come on, brother, man. I thought you were smarter than that. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm actually surprised to see how um, overly simplistic he is when it comes to this sort of stuff. It's very, it feels like it's very binary, his approach to stuff, because I'm not, I'm not, de I'm not denying that most likely at those levels that he's operating in because i wasn't fortunate enough to work at those type of levels in streetwear and stuff in the industry the highest i got up to was just basically being a store assistant and for the most part in those sort of stores you know they're just looking for cool people um to work there or just people who just want to work in a retail store anyway because retail is just retail at the end of the day but i'm sure at those sort of levels there are there is going to be a bit of a ceiling you're kind of you kind of come up against i'm sure it does happen but usually i feel like especially in streetwear maybe less so in fashion i feel like in streetwear there's so many opportunities for you to do stuff that even if you do hit a wall it uses an opportunity for you to do something else yourself like there's loads of brands that have basically have been started off at the back of them hitting up being hitting a wall and then deciding hey i want to correct this and fix it with my own thing and then they go and do their own thing or maybe they continue working at that place that they hit a wall at while also doing their own thing um you can do those two things at, at the same time but to just you know hit a wall then throw your toys out of the pan and complain that you're not getting your own way and then come and cry on social media about it and then paint it as one thing when it really is another thing is insane and like i said fundamentally accusing supreme of systemic racism is legitimately like going to Berghain, not getting in and then accusing them of homophobia or racism it's insane it's like what how does that make any sense um what people saying in chat someone tagged me here um the highest position ever and was a store merchandise at target <laughs> so there design you're an idiot <laughs> yeah <laughs> um another one here they were right they were right why the fuck should a white founded own brand with mostly white people financially benefiting be making clothes depicting black death and destruction like be for real another person i'm a fan of tremaine but i think he should have kept that collab imagery and story to his own brand than in tears that's more centered around those themes realistically supreme has no business telling that story and profiting from it to be fair i push back on this a little bit i push back a little bit for this i push back i think part of the reason why Tremaine was hired was because of his work at Denim Tears and his work at Denim Tears is what it is so for sure Supreme knew what they were getting into when they hired him they knew he was gonna try and 
take some of the ideas that he would have maybe done at Denim Tears and maybe try and apply them at Supreme. Why else would you hire him? He did, they knew Wagwan. And obviously, as a, as a designer, as a creative, it's a great opportunity to take, to take that role and to have the opportunity to maybe tell those stories on such a bigger platform, right? To an audience, you know, that's in the millions all over the world, all colors and creeds. You know I mean, that is great. You kind of been able to have a chance to sort of like broadcast message all across the place. So that makes a lot of sense. I just think that he should have went back to the drawing board and proposed another idea that maybe was able to tell the same story, but in a more subtler way. I think there could have been some sort of compromise that was reached. I just feel like so far from the story that we've heard, it felt like he had one idea or a couple, they got knocked back and then he immediately started crying. He immediately started crying racism. And that to me is a bit out of order, personally. It continues. Bro been dancing for corporate fashion cultures for years. Oof. Now want to cry foul because a billion dollar corporation don't want to use their platform to put a slave on a t-shirt. We got to get past this victim shit. We can be proud of our heritage, but we don't got to keep pushing our pain for profit. I agree with this sort of stuff. I think personally, I've never been somebody that kind of ascribes to the victim narrative of things in general. I think it's in it's, I think it's just not necessary nowadays. And I think just in terms of my own pride and ego, I would much rather um, try to secure positions or to be in contentions for roles because of the quality of my work, not because of my skin color, right? Not because of my race, something that I didn't choose. I feel like the the kind of the quality of my work should speak for itself. And that should be the thing that should be um, put into consideration as in whether or not I'm good at my job, whether or not I should get the job, whatever it may be. But I feel like the representation or the, you know, the the sort of like the race game thing is a dangerous one to play because it's the same thing I used to say to a few of my friends who DJ who are women. They sometimes ask me, oh, what do you think about women who are online DJs? And, you know, they always have their tits out, always have their bum out, showing skin and stuff. My, my opinion on that was I don't mind it. I feel like you should do whatever it needs to be done to get your foot through the door, especially in an industry like DJ, where it's incredibly um, competitive. There is no one way to get in. Um, and in general, it's just hard to kind of get through the door. So getting through the door, however you need to get in through the door, whether it's you showing loads of cleavage, showing your ass crack, whatever it may be, licking a lollipop while you're on stream, who gives a fuck, do it. But also be very mindful to make a switch in your approach and your representation and how you're seen, because you don't, always want to be the sexy girl because if you're always a sexy girl then people don't take your artistry seriously and if you're always a sexy girl especially in the era of fucking social media your comments are going to be wild people are going to be objectifying you on a fucking daily basis even though you want to be seen as a legit artist and a legit dj they're always going to be commenting in the fucking posts on your on your fucking comments nice tits nice bum those lips blah, blah, blah. that's all you're going to be getting so you have to be very mindful of that and make that switch and i think the same thing applies to the whole idea of getting jobs because you're black you could get a job because you're black in terms of you know an affirmative action sort of thing representation thing maybe some white guilt because of what happened to george floyd and shit cool black squares get the role but then once you get the role also make sure your work is good step up to the plate like, like be ready to kind of show and prove don't just get the role because of your race then not be able to fucking show and prove be absolutely terrible at what you do and essentially put the people that hired you in the in a in a funky position where they're thinking we can't fire you because if we fire you, it looks crazy <laughs> but you're fucking shit at what you do or you're an annoying person or you're hard to work with or you're never around or whatever it may be you just have to kind of be very cautious of like taking that approach which is why i usually try to you know steer more towards the direction of just being very good at what i do and being undeniable because that you know is going to probably um you know suit you better in the long term again what do i know um another one says so the part of this was over a t-shirt and the slave being hung on on it getting cancelled correct okay let me say that one more time so part of this is over a t-shirt with a slave being hung on it getting cancelled correct which is the really sad thing about it like Tremaine essentially walked away from a very well-paying, um, you know, prestigious job, mainly because of his principles. But if you look at it really, take away all the emotion and stuff, because a couple of his ideas got knocked back. It's a real big shame because the, the, the kind of the possibilities, the options of being able to 
you know, open up the brand to loads of different people, be able to give people, be, be able to put people in position, whether it's through collaborations or through fucking, you know, commissioning photographers for fucking editorials and whatnot. All that stuff is gone by the wayside now because you weren't able to kind of put your ego to one side, be able to swallow a bit of rejection, a bit of pushback and then go from there. Actually thinking of it, actually, maybe a part of the reason why this is a bit of an issue, maybe Tremaine hasn't had a boss in a long time as well. That might have played into it forget his politics and he's you know whatever his idea on race and shit maybe the fact that he's been working on his own doing his own thing for so long and now suddenly you're literally working at nine to five effectively while you're also running your brand on the side maybe he just couldn't handle it being told what to do which is understandable really but again you can't paint that as fucking systemic racism that's the only unfair bit um and that one says crazy how this is exactly what yay says um, which is funny because there's actually a comment here I've got actually from somebody where they did post the the yay thing, which I think is a bit unfair because I don't think the yay thing is in con. I don't think the yay thing applies to this because the context around it was a bit more, you know, there's a bit more levels and nuance to it. But somebody provided the screenshots of that time when yay and Tremaine were going back and forth over social media. Um, I think it kind of started because yay mentioned Virgil in something he was speaking about when he was going on his whole um, anti-Semitism world tour. And um, Tremaine kind of got angry about him mentioning Virgil in like, you know, in context of what he was saying. And it kind of revealed, oh, you know, you and Virgil weren't even cool before he passed to the point where you weren't invited to a private funeral, blah, blah, blah. And then Kanye decided to kind of go back at him, call him Tremendous, start a whole entire, like, you know, um, parody supreme line called Tremendous with these pictures all over the place and stuff. And anyway, so this is a post that Kanye wrote at the time. It says, and to Tremaine, I'm changing your name forever. Tremaine's new name is the B is Tremaine's new name as the BLM officer at Supreme is Tremendous, which is ironic because you know he's saying he was Tremaine's the BLM officer, and then Tremaine then goes on to get fired or no to leave because of issues regarding race. Anyway, it continues. No relationship to Sean Mendes or Eva Mendes for clarity, because Latinos believe in God. Companies don't hire creative directors, they hire BLM officers. For all the people that hate you and your weak ass pants, no, you only got the job since you were black and you used to work for me and you knew Virgil. Jesus. Hey, Tremendous. Hey, Supreme. Tremaine doesn't even skate. You got your girlfriend to record me without my knowledge so you could threaten me on behalf of your Virgil killing bosses. You don't have the money to make it out of this one alive. This is the worst mistake of your life. So yeah, it was on some mad time. And then the next screenshot here. Which one is this one? Uh, oh, so this is him. Okay, this is what he said. Cool. But yeah, again, I don't think the, the, the yay thing is fair. It obviously is funny, but I don't think it's fair. Big up uh, Sting. I do appreciate you. Much love from Houston, Texas. Rock on gesture h-town yeah big up h-town free my guy tory <laughs> but yeah no uh big up stinger girl. appreciate you brother thank you for the two dollar super chat my friend appreciate you appreciate you so um let's go back to a few more of these comments here what are people saying here above um to be honest yeah is the wrong messenger for this because adidas took his ip and sold his shoes without him he's trying to call tremaine a pawn but yeah yeah exactly 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 the context around all of that is there's more levels to it yeah, let's just not get into it. But I think if if you're if you're a yay fanboy and you see this happening, it kind of feels like a prophecy, you know? I get it. Whatever. Um uh and also uh, like I I'm I'm sensing there's a lot of people that didn't like Tremaine online. Again, I don't pay attention to, you know, a lot of the kind of like um sentiment around humans and what they do and stuff no I, I, around them as people i like the work that they produce but i'm not really clued in on like people thinking oh he's a cunt she's a bitch i don't really know that stuff but from reading between the lines searching his name on on twitter and stuff like i feel like tremaine didn't really have a lot of like good grace out there i don't know people didn't really like him i thought he was always a quite a likable person um i've met him only a couple of times here and there back in the day very very long time ago but he always came across very nice very um personable uh very chill but it seems that people online didn't really like him too tough um i'm not too sure if it's because of his politics because of his brand but it seems that people were kind of like looking to you know to kick him while he was down after they heard him kind of leaving fucking supreme odd but anyway um maybe I, i'm missing something another one says 
To be honest, why would you want a white majority demographic to even cop a tea like that? That's a Denim Tears project for real. I don't want rich white kids wearing that shirt thinking it's powerful. You can educate and make more meaningful art, to be honest, to spread black culture and awareness. Supreme needs to move from that edgy shirt, t-shirt grift and figure out something more intellectual. And then having a diversity problem in-house is far from shocking. That's definitely a real issue. But black genocide t-shirts for sale to people who are that disconnected from the origin seems dangerous. Uh, yeah, true. Um, you know, the, the representation thing is interesting because I remember that was one of the issues Virgil had before he died, didn't it, right? RIP to the goat. But I remember Virgil posting a picture of the stu of like the Off White studio in Milan. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Off White at the time, I'm not sure if it's still now, it was partly owned by this um, group called New Guards Group. And they're like a, you know, I guess an all encompassing production manufacturing sort of like company thing. And they were the one that were helping to kind of, you know, to run um, Off White alongside with Virgil. And they had offices obviously in Milan. And he posted a picture of them at their Christmas party or something. And it was just loads of white people. And everyone on social media went crazy. Uh, but I didn't really understand the outrage because it's fucking Milan, isn't it? There's not a lot of black people out there anyway, let alone working in fashion. Um, but obviously, with how Virgil is and what he does, whatever, he tried to readdress the balance and obviously have, you know, work the projects that he was working on with off-white he would always go out of his way to kind of hire up-and-coming people especially black kids and stuff to kind of front the campaigns do the photography and the styling and shit but the issue of representation when it comes to fucking um when it comes to representation in the workplace is a difficult one really especially when it comes to the arts because i feel like these are like niche industries to for the most part niche industries usually from my you know background you know being somewhat african my parents weren't really that enamored when i decided i wanted to go to an art university and shit they wanted me to go and do like stem so i'd imagine around the world it's probably the same most minorities don't really respond too well when their kids want to go and do creative shit so it's hard to then say like if, if, if there's not a lot of kids from minority applying for those jobs in the first place or even doing them it's hard to then say just because this brand may be fronted by a black person that they should also then have a particular quota like what is the quota that's what i want to know like what's the magic number like if i'm like i'm surprised to hear that the head office of supreme has less than 10 percent minorities i'm surprised right just just of just an anecdotal thing i'm surprised but then what's the magic number should it be 15 percent should it be 20? Should it be 50? 60? Like, what is the actual number? Because if you think about it, Supreme also isn't a black company. It's not the black experience. It's kind of like a New York experience. It's kind of similar to London where it kind of, especially skateboarding at that time, you know, late 80s, early 90s, it was more so like everyone, all the sort of like delinquents, all the kind of like latchkey kids, no matter if they were white, you know, black, Latino, whatever it may be, right? They all kind of, you know, were gravitated towards skateboarding. And that's where they kind of were felt that they represented through that. And obviously brands came up around that kind of had different, you know, maybe th 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 there were brands that more that were more white, they were more black, whatever it may be. But it was more so the skateboarding banner kind of encompasses loads of different people. It's not just a one particular race thing. Um, I guess the only thing that probably set, probably is a bit hard to swallow if you're somebody that's remain working in house is that or if you're familiar with supreme every store i've been in for the most part i've been to new york i've been to la and i've been to london usually they're very multicultural in terms of the people working on the shop floor or the kids right most of the time they're usually playing super loud fucking heavy metal or rap music and shit so i understand if you get into the head office and you just see loads of fucking scandinavian looking people it might be a bit off off putting but I don't know. I, I I think I'd be okay if the fact that they are, you know, rep they 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 rep they're representing you in a lookbook, so you're kind of representing the brand. The brand is being embraced by those communities. Your projects that you're putting out push that certain demographic. Um, it doesn't always need to be represent represented in a head office kind of thing. And also, like I said, what's the magic number? Like I don't know what the magic number is. That's the only issue. Um, let's scrap a bit here. Oh, you are saying. Uh, the people who I know who sorry SD says the people I know who met him say he's opportunistic only nice to people who look like they can do stuff for him to be fair I'm gonna say SD as much as that may be right 
in my experience of dealing with Tremaine, I've only seen him a couple of times here and there. I don't really know the guy too well. I would say that's not true. I would say one of the things that made Tremaine kind of stand out when I was coming up on the scene was that he was the one person that was actually nice, regardless of if you were somebody important. Everybody else that he was around, his other friends and stuff were fucking cunts. Like there's so many of them. I don't even want to go through the list of them, but they're absolute dickheads. Pick kind of people that only gave a fuck about you if you were working in a certain place. If you didn't have nothing to offer them, they're not they're nowhere around. They had this weird snobby attitude, even though they were just working, you know, shitty jobs and stuff, but they felt like because they work for a particular company, it kind of made them better than other people. Whereas I feel like Tremaine always going out of his way to be actually decent. So that might be your experience, but I think from my experience, he's kind of always been a chill dude i think that's probably why he's so popular and well loved within his little community of people because he's just a a decent human um aside from the stuff that he does again could be wrong um natashki said can you imagine them tears supreme t- <laughs> seven dirty come on the them tears as much as i like them tears it's not better supreme let's be fair fashion and roadman says um though to be honest though, how many black kids, people are in Milan, exactly, fashion moment. every time I go there for fashion week, people look at me funny, like they've never seen a black man. Yeah, yeah. I bet going to Milan is like, um, is like going to Prague. Like, when I, the first time I went to Prague was one of the first times I actually remembered what it was like being black. Like, you know, because living in London, you don't really, re- you don't really know. Too tough. Sometimes you go outside London, it's different. But sometimes you go to other countries and you're like, oh shit, you, you remember... <laughs> <laughs> what it's like <laughs> being in a foreign country and being the color that you are i was like fucking hell mate prague was wild man they were staring at me like i was a fucking zoo animal absolutely crazy <laughs> so imagine having a design studio in, in prague and then complaining that there's not enough representation it's like bruh you're in prague um anyways um it's a uh, more why the fuck is people saying uh, uh, shout the mods Big up crash. Um Oh shit, really? It's fashion Roma. I studied chemical engineering as my first degree before going to CSMC. You see what happens? He had to prove to his parents that he was <laughs> that he was smart before he was allowed to go and do his own thing, right? Fuck you know, I didn't know that. Chemical engineering. <laughs> before you get permission to be allowed to go to csm fucking hell man growing up in a fucking african household is 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 sometimes the worst and the best thing honestly sometimes the worst and the best thing the way they can shoot down your dreams and your hopes and your aspirations but then it gives you a good it kind of toughens you up to shit like yeah i mean like there's no way if i'm if i'm growing up in a black household with that much push back an objection to my dreams am i gonna go work at supreme and have an idea shot down and cry about it in the toilet and cry racism it's all good man i've had worse said to me at home <laughs> i'll come back tomorrow with a better idea don't worry i've had worse said to me at home <laughs> i've had my mom just rip my rip up my drawings and throw them in a the bin like it's some mad things you know what i mean so it's all good anyway let's go on here Another person says, I mean, to, I, too, I too don't think Supreme or any other brand should be dropping shirts with depictions of people being hung or scars from enslavements. Um, shout out to the black creative who was in the room and was able to shut that down. Without further discretion, what would, uh, what would that drop have addressed or solved for the black community that is still suffering from residual effects of enslavement? That's not Supreme's function of a society. Of course. And also, it's not really like, I don't know, it's like, if you want to get into systemic racism, like, through, I don't know, how do you how do you address that issue via Supreme? I'm just trying to think, like, if you actually went to do it, like, what would you actually do? What do you do? Like, do you have, like, Blacks Only Day during fucking Black History Month or something? Like, a specific day of, of the week that only Black people are allowed in. Like, what do you do? Like, I don't know. Like, what do you actually do with Supreme if you actually went to fix systemic racism? Like, what do you do? Um, I, don't know. I don't know. It beats me. Beats me. It's an interesting design challenge, just to say that. Um, you're in a rare position, which is itself a criminal. Thank you for standing on the morals. It's deeper than music. Yeah, that's the one thing I give him credit for. To be fair, this person is right. I give Tremaine credit for that he definitely stands on his fucking morals because he walked away from a job that most people would kill their own mothers to get. Do you know what I mean? He did that. 
He got the job anyway. He didn't really care about it too tough. I think I mentioned in another clip. You go on the Instagram page. He's not always jacking off Supreme. He's not posting. If it was me, I'll be posting archive images up. I'll be posting excerpts of James Jebbia interviews. Like I'll be wanking off to Supreme every day. He didn't really give a fuck. He just treated like a job. Do you know what I mean? And the fact he's able to walk away with his head held up in his head because he feels like he was right and step away from that because, you know, it didn't align with his morals or principles, you got to give the guy credit because most people wouldn't do that. Well-paid, highly prestigious. Nah, not for me. You guys are not aligned to my ideas and what I'm looking to do. I'm stepping away. You have to give the guy rating for that, to be fair. Another says, this is nothing new. Our voices within the fashion industry have always been muted. I feel as if we should pull away from these big brands and support our own. Yeah, right. Good luck trying to get black people to stop buying Balenciaga. Good luck trying to get black people to stop buying Gucci. Good luck trying to get black people to stop buying Louis Vuitton. Good luck. What, you want me to stop buying that and buy and wear what? Trapstar instead. Benja? Come on. Like, <laughs> let's be real. Let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. Um, they use and abuse our culture and gain profit from taking creativity. I worked for four years um with lv exactly or fubu fucking hell come on and only reason why i was appointed a cuss well a cd what hold on let's read that again i worked for four years in lv and the only reason why i was able to be obtained to obtain the position i did was because virgil was appointed cd prior to the they wouldn't have uh, interviewed me the discrimination and abuse of culture was was disgusting when i opened my mouth i was dismissed <laughs> and <laughs> when i opened my mouth they whipped me <laughs> <laughs> and discipline because I refuse to tolerate the disrespect. Virgil passed and I moved on and was blacklisted from LVMH. Okay, okay, this guy is whoever you are, I don't believe you. So you're telling me you got the job because Virgil got hired, and then when Virgil died, they fired you straight away. All right, all right, whatever you say, buddy. Um, Virgil passed and I moved on and was blacklisted from LVMH because I'd, I'd had an opinion. Yeah, true. Um, I didn't matter that I created a platform, made millions of dollars of the company. All they could see was a black boy. So you made the millions of dollars, yet they fired you because you're black or because Virgil died. Cool. Um, creating your create your own and keep it authentic as a community. The sooner we realize it, the better. Okay, cool. Whatever. Next, when they go to the comment section of actually, what's this one? What, what is this? Oh, and this obviously is a t-shirt that's kind of a bit apt, to be honest. Big up this person, um, Ma Majesty Rhea, for posting this. This is one of the t-shirts that Ye designed, I think with Ian Connor as well, actually, um, which is a flip on this particular t-shirt. I think that was made by, if I'm not mistaken, is it Gons designed this? I think this is Gons. It's meant to be Muhammad Ali. Um, and it says Supreme is an American. And on the flip, it's tremendous with an illustration of Tremaine on the t-shirt, <laughs> right? So that's considering what's happened. That's a very apt um, T-shirt. So this has been on the timeline again. But again, I think it's unfair to involve the whole Yay conversation because Ye was in was was on some wild times when he was around with the whole Aidas thing as well. But I'm curious to see what people are saying on business of fashion um, comments because these guys can be a bit interesting. And then we're also going to see the comments on the same top story on Supreme Drops because the kids on here didn't like Tremaine at all. They all didn't think he was good for a brand. One particular guy said the brand died when Tremaine was hired, which is extremely, extremely rude and unfair, uh, especially when you consider his health complications that he had. So let's read the comments on the business of fashion story on this and see what some of the um, some of the white elites had to say about this. <laughs> um Okay, this guy really doesn't like him. He, he posted a comment on both, on his, the copied and pasted the same comment. So let's skip this person. Let's see this one. Another one. To all those commenting on how, on, on it only now being a problem and he was fine collecting the check, have y'all never been in a position where they slowly show their racism layer by layer? project by project it's not it's not you join the fangs are shown immediately also have you ever never had to weigh the moral dilemma of does this need to be a problem is it my responsibility to fix rebel against it or can i just be a black person that exists and collects a check like everybody else you're acting brand new all right whatever another person white people in these comments i know more on this topic than him <laughs> <laughs> that's funny another one now after you've done benefited all these years you're just now noticing eye rolls we've been new y'all was funny when did he realize after the check cleared who knows another person and for that paper 
Look how low we'll stoop. Even if you're in a Benz, you're still a nigger in a coop. Oh, Kanye West words. Another human. Wow, I'm so perplexed at the commentary. So many unex so unexperienced people, or so many unexperienced people who aren't in the fashion industry, nor have ever broken down doors in the industry for African Americans, have the nerve to judge man's decision. Go do your research. Find out who this man is and what he has done to break down the barriers of racism in fashion. This isn't the first time it's happened. His visibility just threatens the ideas of racism in the industry. Like we can't see there's using hip-hop icons and black matriarchs in fashion to campaign because streetwear is dying like it's always when something is over. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like that is a whole bunch of gobbledygook. But I find it interesting, right? One thing I'm thinking about, I wonder if Tremaine maybe didn't realize what game he was playing because I think he did this similar strategy with the Converse shoes, isn't it? If I remember correctly, didn't the Converse shoe get cancelled? I actually got a pair, right? I got a pair. It's got um, the, the the Converse shoes that he he did with the with the Pan African flag. Um, I've got a pair, right? The highs, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't the whole idea behind wasn't the whole law behind those shoes that it got cancelled? then Tremaine kind of outed Converse by posting a picture of them on his Instagram and basically saying, hey, you guys need to do more. It got cancelled because they didn't want to give money or put this or do that. Something happened like that. So he basically kind of shamed Converse into releasing the shoes and releasing them the way he wanted them to be released. <laughs> so maybe he tried to do the same thing with Supreme and it didn't work. Maybe, maybe. But I don't think he said anything publicly about the t-shirt before, before he left, did he? So I don't know. Maybe that plays into it. I'm not too sure. Just thinking aloud here. Another person. Oh, this is the Gabrielle. This is the Gabriella person that Kanye tore, tore up because of her outfit, innit? High system racism cannot be alleged. It simply is. This lady, I don't know. I don't know. Complaining about systemic racism when you most probably were a, a, a diversity hire is insane. Personally for me. If you're a diversity hire, you can't complain about systemic racism. I'm sorry. You just can't. Um, another one. So many non-black people willing to come jump through every hoop because racism just couldn't possibly exist in fashion industry. I don't think anyone's saying it doesn't exist. I just think people are saying that in this particular context, it's hard to see... It's hard to come to the conclusion. If you're fair, that Supreme racist in this in this instance. If anything, they didn't do right by Tremaine by going to him directly and saying, hey, we're cancelling it. They just let him think that it was still going on. He was still working on a project. Then he found out last minute it's not happening, which kind of undermined his position and he kind of felt like his position was untenable. They should have maybe spoken to him first about it. But I don't think you can read the story and the account and come away thinking Suprema racist. Like, it's just an insane take. Like, legit insane take. Uh, bullshit. We've, we've uh, never given the facts. Sounds like an escape plan. Washing his hands of the brand. If you haven't worked in corporate fashion, I'm going to need you to sit this one out. Uh, another person says, wait, the same systemic racism that hired him. I'm 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 confused. Or whatever. Kumbudu. Um could be that his designs aren't good and we and we only know his name because of yay that's not fair it doesn't matter how anyone knows your name it just matters when you get the position when you once you get the role you get the opportunity that you show and prove um i don't know how you can judge if somebody's that's the thing i'm also wondering like how do you judge like what are supreme's kpis like how do you judge performance is it sellout um is it sales like how how do you judge the performance of a collection because I always say over the years that Supreme always have up and down collections. For me personally, Supreme's fall winters are usually better than their spring summers. And I think that goes for most of men's fashion and streetwear. Usually fall, winter is usually a better time for men. I don't think, that's why I always think guys, fashion doesn't really work. Um, I feel like fashion really only works for women because we don't really have nice cool i don't know we just don't look good in the sun sometimes we don't know what to dress like but i feel like in the winter most dudes know how to fucking get down even if you don't have good style you can probably figure out a decent outfit once the temperature kind of cools and shit so if that's the case and you do a dud in spring summer but then you come out with one of the best collections in recent years with full winter how could they then decide okay just because that one dud you're out it's a bit much you know what i mean so i don't buy this whole his designs weren't good enough shit it doesn't make sense to me. It's a bit, it's a bit nonsense. 
glad he because they've got people at the at the at the company who have been there for like more than 10 years who were part of a design team that did dud collections they never got fired so why would they fire him after one makes no sense glad he did it didn't compromise your vision and people that's fair enough that's why i, I give him credit for that also he didn't compromise another person here says people have to start looking at things more objectively rely on their competence sometimes people just don't share the same vision creatively and that's okay um, deciding not to use a popular black artist for a campaign does not automatically constitute racism when business or professional relationships don't work out the go-to cannot be that's racist unless we have explicit conclusive evidence with receipts were they racist when they hired him or they put or, or they put the racism on hold for the hiring process integrity and accountability please yeah i agree with that to be fair and we can see check the comments here sorry my friends um they had issues with the box being in the coffin. They keep the the oh, the, the, hold on. Talk about the box in the coffin, right? Imagine if he had an idea like the coffin. If I remember correctly, who was it? Imagine if he had like an idea for an installation where you had like a coffin in Supreme that was draped with the Pan African flag. I think he's done something like that before in the past, right? With the fucking cotton reef on top. Imagine if that went down the same way that that guy Justin O'Shea, when he was the creative director of. Bre I think of Brioni or one of those kind of brands for like a, a month or something. It was one of the shortest creative director 10 years in fashion, probably history. It was super short. And I remember one of these things that he did is that he got, um, I think he dressed Metallica or one of those bands in the suits that he made for that company. And then I think he changed the retail, you know, the retail stores around. And I think he, he had like a, a coffin on one of the windows displays of this retail store. So it's this prestigious Italian brand, right? This luxury fashion brand. And then they now have this edgy fucking black coffin on the window. It's no surprise that he kind of got fired very quickly because their visions didn't align in the slightest. But that was mostly because they didn't do the due diligence properly before they hired him. But I feel like Supreme probably did do due diligence with um, Tremaine when they hired him. I just think once he got in the door, you know, considering how he speaks and stuff, I just think they were surprised about how racially and politically charged everything he does is. And I just think they just were like, oh, enough, man, come on. Like, let's just make a hoodie. You know what I mean? It wasn't that deep. I think they just assumed he'd come in and sprinkle some of his denim tears magic on what they did. They didn't think he'd come in and be his true self and like be trying to go for it all the time with every little piece that they designed. And they just, they just couldn't handle it. Um, uh, what are you saying here? Uh, what isn't this what execs do sorry isn't this the same what execs do undermine the creative director same thing happened to Demna Balenciaga yeah yeah for sure maybe maybe yes I think the Demna Balenciaga thing is a little bit different isn't it if I'm not mistaken isn't it the Demna thing I think they say the word around town of what I read between the lines is that before that whole um, BDSM Bears thing went down the whole complaint around them that Blen was that he was getting a little he was he, he was allowed too much freedom because of how good their sales were and because of how important he is overall there they kind of let him do what he wanted so they i think the executives felt like it was their opportunity to kind of rein him in a bit once the once the whole bdsm bears thing happened so which kind of probably explains why he's so well behaved and quiet now because you know they basically told him to shut the fuck up no more interviews no more edgy shit like just put out fucking clothes you know what i mean um and he's been doing that for the most part so maybe i don't know maybe, maybe that's the case but um maybe it's just again like i said like he's been working on his own brand for four years before that doing loads of stuff like freelancey working with kanye frank ocean all this stuff essentially not having a boss kind of living life the way he went to live then suddenly he has to move to new york and he's working a nine to five that must have been a hard adjustment. So I'm not denying, I mean, that probably played a part in everything that happened. Um, going from, you know, being the master of your own destiny, doing whatever you please, when you please, and only being restrained by the, and only being kind of, your idea is only being restrained by your wallet. Yeah. And maybe production processes and shit. And now suddenly you're working for a company and you're being told what to do. I mean, even though you're the creative director, that must be a bit hard to take, to be fair. Um, it worked at many brands, but except to undermine CDs, true uh what people saying yeah full winter my faith for fashion you can layer up exactly in tashki uh dickies and hat khakis koila when i left in three da, 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 two. let's continue um good for him but where was he when Ye was saying the same thing selective but he got here in the end true um but not so much there's a lot of racism in the industry amongst human amongst human of different background hmm 
Okay, another one. Let's go for the last page now. This is the Supreme uh, fan page called Drops GT, which I follow. That kind of posts up some good shit about Supreme. You get kind of drop details of what's going to be dropping week on week. Keep. So we're going to get an idea on what the Supreme customers had to say about this whole thing. So their response to it. Sounds like racism card to me. Uh, another one. LOL at everything being about racism nowadays. The dude sucks plain and simple. Yay, been saying it. So it seems like a lot of Supreme fans are also very ardent yay fanboys. So that's why maybe they, they didn't like Denim Tears when he got hired or Tremaine Tour when he got hired. Because when he got hired, he was obviously, you know, having beef with yay at the time or felt I had fallen out with him um, or whatever it may be. So that might have been the case. And did it, if I remember correctly, did he say he got fired from Yeezy too? Hmm. Maybe, I don't know. Playing victim is the fastest way to remain stagnant in life. I wonder though, right? Having that said, I wonder if this is gonna have any if this is gonna have any if this is gonna have any damage to Tremaine's overall reputation in the industry. Like with fashion brands and companies and houses and shit. Will they now look at him as a bit of a liability and think, oh, if we hire him and it doesn't go well, he's gonna air us out and make it seem like we fired him because he 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 was black. Like, is this going to negatively affect him going forward? I wonder. I hope it doesn't because it could just be like, you know, it happened. You know, sometimes you work at a place, it doesn't quite work out. Sometimes you go to a place, you, you think it's going to be one thing and it's another thing. Happens all the time. But I wonder if this will negatively affect him in the future. Hopefully it doesn't. But you know how this fashion industry works, man. Word, you know what I mean? Word travels around fast. Maybe there was stuff happened behind the scenes that people didn't like also. I don't really know, but hoping that's not the case. Another one. Racism, this is insane. Even more happy he's gone now. Aha, the chief BLM officer blamed racism, of course. <laughs> chief BLM officer. <laughs> Honestly, I don't I don't want anyone to remember me like that. I don't want that to be part of my legacy, man. That's fucking horrendous. Um thank God he left by racism. Didn't they just release a whole collab with Young Boy? Now racism is racist. Now Supreme Racist, sorry. This cancer culture got to stop. Another one says, left him with with sequels. Sad that most hype beasts just want to dunk on him whilst without listening to his real concerns. Exactly, true. There was a point in time where um, one of these creative directors for Supreme said that the brand was not for black city kids and only skaters. Who said that? Is that true? I don't remember them saying this. One of the founders, one of the creative directors of Supreme said, hmm, I'm not sure that that's true, but too many kids commenting never no racism i mean come on i live in manhattan nyc where supreme is located the security is black <laughs> come on to be fair saying this is insane saying that a place isn't racist because they got black security is kind of racist <laughs> if, you know, if you know you know i'm not gonna lie saying that is kind of racist <laughs> they've got black security guards they can't be racist it's like sir uh, anyway i'll let him rock um the security is racist uh the security is black people that work in the store are multi-colors that works multi again multi-colors you know reducing people to the color of their skin is just always gross isn't it black white brown yellow latino german this oh my god bro oh my god anyway um black white hispanic never had any problems I always get there after work and that's why I go on Sundays from now on. But racism, nah, never is supreme. Another one, folks not even reading what he says. First of all, this was a collaboration that's been in the making for a long time. Um, for them to go behind his back and cancel the collaboration while then not telling him um, why they did so sounds fishy to me. No, th that's for sure. That's the bit I think he has a legit grievance with and he has every reason to be pissed off and walk because they went behind his back. I think anybody in those positions... If they do that and they go behind the back to cancel it and don't explain why, it would make me feel a way. But I feel like he also knew that they weren't that receptive to the idea anyway. He should have proposed more ideas that basically were along the same were along the same lane, told the same story, and then propose those and see why. Well, well, as, as, as a creative as an artist, you should be able to do that. Having just those two ideas and then having them knock back and then crying about that is a bit much for me. 
another false victim you're claiming race issues now um, of course all the little white boys are going to act confused blah 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 but yeah you get the gist um that's essentially what happened tremaine doesn't seem to be happy about it let's do one last check on his stories and see if he's posted anything there cryptic and vague to kind of you know continue on this conversation but so far you kind of get the gist of what's happened he wasn't happy they weren't comfortable he walked away they tried to sweep it under the rug it came out and now he's crying foul of racism you kind of get the gist of what happened so the recent post here is a very nice post with a guy with a very nice outfit it says here anyway back to the program adg denim um adg green denim available on denim tears.com okay cool so there's a new denim jacket coming out there it looks very sweet oh i like the look of that too that that oh 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 this looks beautiful, isn't it? Fucking hell, I'm not going to lie. That looks nice. Um, let's see his story. What's he saying there? Any more informations? No, we got the green. We've got the denim there. No more stories about what happened. No, okay, we've got uh, Kerwin Frost, I guess. Kerwin Frost. Uh, look what he's doing. Doesn't that remind you of um, oh, uh, American politicians uh kneeling black history month do you guys remember that that kind of feels like the street version of that is that what he's doing i forgot what who, who they were yeah this one that kind of reminds me of that doesn't it feel like Kerbin is doing this democrats face backlash after wearing yeah whatever they did here what was it garners i don't know why they did this but i remember seeing this on social right you guys might remember this doesn't this feel a little bit like what Kerbin's doing by wearing the new the new denim tears drip and kneeling <laughs> <laughs> or am I bugging out? Doesn't that feel a little bit the same? Where is it? It's here, isn't it? Right? Uh there. The other one? No, it's not that one. Where is it? Where is it? There. Is it that one? Where is it? This one. Doesn't that feel a little bit like the same? <laughs> Doesn't that feel like the same thing? <laughs> oh no, it's not that one. It's this one. Doesn't it feel like the same thing? Doesn't it feel like he's doing the same thing there? <laughs> <laughs> like what's bro doing man <laughs> like oh look he's got a rosa parks t-shirt hoodie on as well bath bro bath fucking bath man it's the same as this shit it's the same fucking shit so fucking corny but hey uh, hey you gotta get it how you get it i guess isn't it <laughs> what the fuck is he doing what's bro doing <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway whatever let's continue um next slide what's he talking about here um, well i say black rider okay cool everyone every major brand profits of black culture and has white supremacy issue okay true i guess to proof of this the proof of this goes back to brands making one billion commitments to black communities in 2020 following George Floyd's murder. Some even had the nerve to say that they were focused on diversity. Yeah, true. You can call a lot of that stuff out. I just don't think calling a lot of that stuff out off the back of what happened to Tremaine is, you know, apt or makes any sense, really. You know, to both things are not really the same in my opinion now analyze what's happening today how many articles have you seen about brands diverse diversity in diversity um a great majority of these brands have reneged on their promises because public pressure subsided these brands received the publicity from making the commitment and then stuck snuck out of the back door without paying up supreme will likely leverage the same uh, performative strategy as gucci so they're basically saying that Supreme might come out and say, we're going to address all Tremaine's concerns. We're going to, you know, start hiring more black creatives and artists and shit. And we're going to try and make our office 50% black, wherever they are in head offices around the world. Because I don't know if they have only one. Maybe they have a few. Um, and we're going to try to do that. If that's the case, I'm telling this to you now. Let's go on the main screen. If Supreme do some affirmative action shit, where they start hiring black people just for the sake of hiring black people, please hire me. <laughs> okay? Please hire me. If you just start hiring blacks just to kind of readdress the balance because you feel guilty about Tremaine not getting it, not being able to get his fucking slavery t-shirts off, give me the role. Give me a, a role, okay? Give me a role. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> let, let me show up and prove because if you guys are handing out roles based on fucking skin color, I'm going to come in like a fucking wrecking ball with my, with my cheeks out like Kanye. I swear to God. 
But this is fucking nonsense, bruv. Like, you should be hiring people on the fucking, you know, on the strength of what they do, on their skill, on their experience, on their ability to fucking execute on that high level, especially with VF Corp breathing down their necks and shit. Fuck, man. Anyway, Supreme will likely make a statement of the error and plan to educate themselves on the diversity and commitment of hiring more black folks in leadership and when the smoke clears, it's back to business. I don't think so. I think Supreme has got this far by always doing the right thing. I feel like they always kind of know how to kind of, they always kind of, they're always cool with it. So I feel like they will do it in a, in a, in a cool way. Maybe it won't be some big fucking article. Maybe it'll be done silently behind the scenes. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be a, a, a sit down interview with fucking James Jebber who hardly fucking talks. So that'll be fucking wild, right? Also, spare a thought for James Jebbia. This English dude who moves to the States starts up one of the most influential, um, well-regarded, legendary streetwear brands of all time, right? That's based around skateboarding. He doesn't even skate. He somehow gets accepted into a very clicky, um, insular, hard to break into community like skateboarding or, or sorry, um, uh, subculture like, like skateboarding, manages to fucking build it into one of the biggest brands in the world, gets investment for fucking VF Corp. And then you're going to Tremaine's house and he's lecturing you on how to run your business. Just think about it from Jermaine Jeb. J sorry, Jermaine. Jermaine's probably the black version of him. But think about it from James Jebbia's point of view. Being lectures on how to run your business <laughs> that you've been running for, you know, all these years with little to no fucking, you know, issues. And you're being lectured by Tremaine after he's just run his brand for like only four years or stuff. Like, could you imagine how that must feel? But you have to sit there and listen white fragility <laughs> we have to what's that thing people are saying during the george floyd thing um what's that thing people are saying like listen take what's that thing was that phrase like like just shut up and listen or something right black people are speaking shut up and listen and something it's like yo i don't know i don't know wild times anyway continue how does this change we have to support black owned brands we must support us the same way um you must, you know, Jesus Christ. Uh, you must support us the same way we support white brands that leverage black culture. We need to show up for us. Yeah, but I'm not wearing Benja or, or fucking Trapstar because it's just shit. I don't care who makes it. You know what I mean? It's not about black owned stuff. Like, that's why I think Telfar and stuff smash it. And even fucking uh, the Moa Lola fucking in iteration nowadays smashes it because it's just good stuff. This whole like, I'm going to buy your shit because you're black owned is just out with me. That's That's a wrap. I'm not really on that vibe at all. Make good stuff and I'm going to buy it. Will it be beneficial if you make good stuff and you happen to be black? Cool, amazing. But I'm not just going to buy your stuff because you're black. Like, that's insane. Like, come on, bro. Anyway, um, some some person called Brock Marciano was on the phone to him, I guess. <clears throat> right? Is that him on the phone to him? Or somebody else? Who's this? I don't know who this person is. I think so. Another post uh, of the White Fragility book. And then someone called Kareem with a, yeah, cool. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Look, look, look. Is that someone in the, in the, in the comments? I'm not wearing Cortez even if you paid me. No, Cortez is pretty good. I think of, of all the UK um, sportswear, streetwear brands that exist, I think Cortez is probably the best. It's probably even better than Trapstar. Even though Trapstar's been around longer, I feel like Trapstar and, and Benja are just like too garbage for me. Like I'd probably wear, I'd probably rather wear like Hoodrich than Trapstar and fucking Benja, even though Hoodrich is awful, awful. Um, but I don't mind Cortez, to be fair. I think he's got a good head on his shoulders, personally. And I think he's kind of like, I don't know, I feel like he's kind of got, he's got potential. I feel like he's got potential. I, I don't know why I think that, but I feel like he's he's got a good head on his shoulders. He kind of knows what he wants to do. Um and he executed as a pretty decent, like, you know, look at look at the tracks that he makes. The, the tracks that he makes are pretty sick. I don't like the logo. I've never liked the logo. I think the Alcatraz logo is a bit shit, personally. But I think if you just look at the tracksuits and the paneling and the construction of them, they do stand out a bit. I don't know what the quality is like compared to other things, but I think they do stand out compared to other tracksuit brands that exist. Because in, in the UK, everyone you know, that comes from ends, fucking loves making tracksuit brands. And that's all they fucking make. But I think his ones stand out, I think, personally. So which I'm interested to see what Skepta's going to be doing. Because Skepta's got a brand coming out, right? He's got his stuff, Mains, um, coming out, I think, soon. But yeah, um, Tremaine still is not happy, I guess. Makes sense why he's not happy. Um, but yeah, man. 
what more needs to be said about that let's see the chat what are you guys saying in the chat about this um what else needs to do they all do this like putting up a lgbtq flag around pride companies don't give a fuck exactly z there's this area right where i used to work around near liverpool street it's like um it's basically like the finance it's, it's the new finance and sort of startup area it's an area called liverpool street and old street and like old street and shoreditch all these areas they have a lot of like startups and you know finance places and shit and it's always funny when you go around those places because when it's um uh when it's fucking gay pride or whatever they'll always stick up fucking they'll always change their logos um to the lgbtq um rainbow thing right so they'll put the colors on their fucking logo they'll have somebody with vinyl like put vinyl lettering outside and make it look like they're you know they're fucking um allies but most of these places are the most like milk toast cookie cutter normie places ever there's probably not even a single gay person that works in those offices and shit so i always find it interesting that they'll go out of their way to do all these performative things with these vinyl letterings with the lgbtq rainbow in it and shit and make it look like they're allies and they're down for the cause and whatnot and there's not a single gay lesbian trans intersex whatever person working in those places zero let alone somebody working in like a C-suite executives class, executive kind of level. So again, it's just all performative. They want to look like they're doing something, but they're not really doing anything. Um, I'm just happy they don't do like during Black History Month. I'm just happy they don't have like, I don't know, fucking um, uh, food trucks outside serving jerk chicken and I don't know, reggae playing and people break dancing. I'm just happy they don't do that because I think they already know that looks a bit crazy because with their performative nonsense, they could go that far and think, yeah, man, this is what you guys like, right? Let's have some footballs here, a couple of basketballs. There's a microphone here. So if you want to MC, <laughs> I'm glad they don't do that because that would be, that, that would be horrendous. Um, da, 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 casual fire. Uh, yeah, Zaki Kola. Yeah. Hi, Zaki. Hi, AZ and Rodeo Brito. Zaki, big up my guy, Rodeo Brito. Exactly. That would be an incredible collab. We'll fucking kill it. SD is saying, I'm not wearing Cortesian if you paid me. Brandon saying, I'm just going to wear a towel from now on. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> True. I said people do this thing where they can't complain. Exactly. All of my reels have vids of British flag being replaced by rainbow flags. I'm in the US. Exactly. I love jerk chicken, says Brandon. <laughs> jamaican beef patty it's jamaican beef patty like night why is it jamaican beef patty night uh manager because it's black history month agostino oh my god um oh yeah 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 um talk about the drums thing let me see if i can find it actually i saw fresh room i said it look look at this yeah oh this is fucking incredible let me see if i can find it bear with me a second mm -mm -mm let's get to the screen come on brother load why aren't you loading here for me okay cool let's get this off the screen and let me get mine uh and let me show you what i've seen here but this is quite an interesting sort of like spin on things i don't know again i think it's just really crazy timing um so he gets you know he he gets his marching orders or he leaves and then very soon after that supreme decided to put out this video um <laughs> <laughs> oh these people playing but let's see i think it's in a random section it should be in let's see it's in the random section let's see if it's in a random section i think it is is it around yeah there no it isn't that's that's, that's the that's the shoes let's see if we've got more videos i think it might actually be on their social media probably maybe it's on their socials let's see supreme new york instagram Bubbity, 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 bub. Bear with me a sec what you guys are saying here in the chat to me jamaican patties all of my reels oxtails you can eat like 10 of those uh let me see if i can find it uh bear with me a second here where is it for some reason blackness is trending on fucking twitter i don't know if it's to do with tremaine i don't think so though <laughs> Uh, blackness enjoy it enjoy it um let me continue actually you know what let me actually see if i can pull it up on here i think it's on the drops page i think they had it on their page 
Because it was basically a post that showed some guys on a thing and they're playing the drums. Let me see if I can find it. It should be here. Let's get the Instagram page. Maybe it's on the Instagram. Let's see if I can find it on there. Maybe it's on the Instagram. Oh yeah, big up Fresh Road, man. Thank you, brother. I'm I'm checking that now. Let's see. What's that? Another person says, funny story. My workplace during Black History Month had a company paid lunch. They served fried chicken collard greens. <laughs> I love that shit. Imagine a food truck sitting for chicken collard greens. What next? Watermelon. Like, yo, man, I fucking love it, man. I love it's always with good intention, those things, but I just love it how badly, how badly that shit comes across when they do it. It's always the best of intentions, I'm sure, but I just love when it just doesn't hit and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you know, your people, your people, your people, them, you like this sort of stuff, innit, right? You guys like the beer can, right? The beer can. <laughs> Right, <laughs> Black History Month. They're gonna be serving fucking fufu and madesu and shit. Right, yo, pounded yam and that, bro. Big up my guys there who know about the fufu and the pounded yam. Mm. <sighs> anyway, yeah, I've got it here. This is the fucking this is the post. So imagine Tremaine walks and says, "Fuck this, man! You guys are fucking racist. You're not letting me get off my fucking vision of having some, you know, of having fucking Tyshawn, um, you know, with his back covered." in a fucking s that looks like he's been whipped right you wouldn't let me get that off and then soon after supreme released this video i feel like they're trolling him a little bit do you think they're trolling him <laughs> look at this video the last drummers marcus garvey park it is plays my computer's a bit slow it plays. Troll, don't you think so? No, all these like happy black people playing on drums on Supreme branded drums in Marcus Garvey Park. <laughs> oh, that's Supreme. I fucking love you guys, man. Honestly, if you guys do any diversity hires, honestly, get me involved. I wonder if I remember like ages ago when Supreme London first opened, there was a story that went, I don't know if it's true about that guy what's his fuck ah Lu lucian i forgot his, his surname but the lucian guy right the skater um who skates for supreme and does stuff for palace and shit i remember there was a, a story that went around that he was one of the first people to i think work at the london store and i think the story was that he got fired really quickly like maybe within the first day or first week because i i, I guess he didn't turn up one day and he was too drunk or whatever or i don't know something or he came late i would love it right if he turned around now because of all this stuff happening with tremaine and try to say, oh, I got fired because of racism. That would be sick. Like, imagine if that happened. Imagine somebody from the store, which is usually a place where they just hire any fucking hood rat, any delinquent, um, you know, with a fucking funny accent and a sovereign ring and, you know, size 40 waist jeans, right? Imagine if one of those kids decided, you know what? Even though I got fired because I was a shitty sales assistant or because my hand was in the till or because I gave out too much discount or because I was always late, even though I got fired for a va actual valid reason, I'm going to just hide behind Tremaine and say it's racism. Oh, that would be wild, isn't it? Imagine if he was able to get away with that. Imagine if he could do that. You say, you know what? It's racism. That's why I fucking got fired. I would love to hear that. I swear to God, I really would. <laughs> I, wish, I wish that could be a thing. I really do. I doubt it, but that would be so funny if that happened. Um... It's like if you're saying they're boiling it, white history of chicken with belly, you know, salt, lows. Um, people saying that also, you know, the people, the, people in the comments saying, really, the people in the comments. Okay, let's see. I, I, didn't, I didn't read the comments. Let me, let me read the comments here. No way. Let's read the comments. So people in the comments saying, see, Tremaine had a point. <laughs> Honestly, man, but you just knew. Imagine, imagine if, Trish, imagine if, imagine, imagine if this was the fucking idea. This was the plan. Imagine Tremaine legitimately wanted to have like Tyshawn, like, you know, fronting his campaign with an S whipped into his back as he's skating down the New York streets, jumping down fucking 32 stairs, 
for 32 sets right of stairs and stuff imagine imagine if that was the case and they're like you know what we don't want that or he wanted to kind of recreate this picture with like um what's his guys what's that guy's name uh sage elsa with his sister that models maybe he wanted to recreate this image right and have sage and his sister um recreate this image of nas and um Khalees at the grammys when he wore the nigger shirt and she had the nigger varsity jacket on <laughs> with hard er imagine that was the idea <laughs> that was the idea that they had right fucking hell man crazy shit or they had like this right they had like a daniel arsham um you know uh crumbling piece of artwork and instead of it being a tape deck it might have been one of the last plantations that was slave ever was on and it broke down or the i don't know or a box lo like i don't know man the whole ideas behind it were fucking terrible anyway um let me just check the comments here quickly i didn't check that thank you for the heads up there my guy where is it uh da, da, da. let's do it again one more time i want i want to see if this is true actually Let's see what they said in the comments. I want to see what these guys are saying. <laughs> Let's see what the kids say. Were the kids able to connect the dots? Because I think they were. I think they were trolling Tremaine. What did the kids say? Were the kids able to connect the dots? Were they saying that Tremaine had a point? Let's see. 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 Come on. Uh, okay. Cool. I can't wait till y'all be back again with them box logos. LMAO, person this after being accused of racism. <laughs> I'm not racist. I have black friends. <laughs> Lols. Trying to beat the racism allegations. Su Supreme's PR team. Systemic racism? Releases the, <laughs> release the drums. <laughs> oh, these comments are brilliant. Your public relations department's got good timing, but the systemic racism claims are not looking good. Um, colonial behavior straight up address the fact that your creative director quit because of systemic racism after being accused of racism to be fair credit to Supreme for not turning off the comments like letting it run credit to them let's, let's, let's keep the open dialogue man um, LMAO to PR team overtime um, working overtime sorry y'all posting this but still um, ain't shipped my order <laughs> I love this <laughs> good <laughs> good troll good shit post um, let's continue here Oh, come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. That, that's a fucking jump scare, isn't it? Bloody hell, my friend. That is a jump scare. Let's move on from your face, please. I don't want to see it too tough. Um, posting this after getting called out for racism is crazy. Damage control as, as ad vibes. Um, had the issues in my car. I love how there's some people here complaining that they didn't get the, the, the dunks and also supporting, supporting Tremaine. So y'all not going to address the racism issue, middle finger oh man this is fucking brilliant man fucking big up everybody out there um you know addressing what they needed to address and saying what they need to say i fucking love it um and then i actually want to check out and see if i can play this video actually because i think this might have been what tremaine may have needed to have done if you wanted to um you know make sure fucking supreme did what he wanted to them to do let me see if i can get this up here on the screen bear with me one second as this loads duh, 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 duh. Uh, what's it called is it let's see if it's suing yeah there we go there we go i got it 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 um yeah this is the one this is the one this is the one maybe maybe this is what this is what Tremaine should have done. Maybe Tremaine should have done this. Maybe Tremaine should have took a a page out of this man uh, out of this young man's book, and this is maybe something he should have done that would have maybe gotten the result he needed in terms of the collaboration with Arthur Jaffer at Supreme and shit. Maybe if he would have done that, he wouldn't have been forced to fucking resign. Maybe play very close attention to this very brilliant advice you're gonna get from a very 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 smart individual in a second as this loads bear with me one second but this is some very very clever and interesting advice that i think a lot of people could benefit from um let's <laughs> but i think this is very 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 on point this is it playing yes it's gonna play now boom there we go I don't like interviewing celebrity rappers because it's cliche. I like to find people like before they blow. And a lot of my questions to them is um, why I'll ask them the same question. Um, 
have you ever worked worked a nine to five or will you yeah. or do you work a nine to five? Yeah. And a I lot sue every job I get. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What I do, I go on a job. I've sued Singular before AT and T. I got forty thousand dollars out of them in two thousand six, July <laughs> six, two thousand six, for race discrimination and sexual harassment, quid quo pro sexual harassment. Just niggas cracking jokes on the job. Right. So what I did, I went and learned employment employment rights. I my last two jobs, I got ten thousand out of that one through OSHA, and got another ten thousand dollars through through OSHA. So what I do, I go find a job because I know they got niggas go be violating safety violations. <laughs> so I'm gonna go complain about safety violations. I know some bitch ass supervisor go get mad about me complaining and start retaliating against me. Then I'm gonna make a call to OSHA and say, hey, they unsafe over here. And then I'm gonna <laughs> let them know, yeah, I'm the one called OSHA, and they go fuck with me. And then I'm gonna. Make Make them pay me ten thousand dollars for retaliation. I get them every time. That's what Tremaine should have done. <laughs> That's what Tremaine should have done. He should have walked in on pure smoke. He should have set them all up for the fail, right? Got them to fucking push back on his ideas. Um, uh, you know, um, question his viability for the job because of his race, whatever it may be. Put them into a position where they had to put you in a corner and then sue the ass cheeks off of them. Alluded to the issues on podcasts, but not mentioned it in 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 detail. You know, got people to talk about it. Have had it had it be a big conversation piece like it is now. That's what he should have done. He should have went in <laughs> with the sole intention of suing Supreme New NYC. That may have probably ended way better. I get him every goddamn time. I get the warehouse job. Uh, man, I work for a gun distribution company. I got they motherfucking ass. Yeah, I'm a bad motherfucker with suing jobs. So, so you go in there knowing you about to get yeah, a job. Yeah, I, I, man, if motherfucker know I'm going to go get a job, they already know he, he, just, I'm the slip and fall nigga. I'm talking about I'm, <laughs> I got a 100% success rate in suing every job I don't work for. Some through either through the EEOC or through OSHA. Jesus and I be Christ. trying to tell other niggas, say, homie, get in on it. They be scared. And then when I get them and they get fired. They call me back. Say, man, you think no, nigga? I tried to tell you. Is 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 it, when you read the employment rights, homie? They say race discrimination is broad. It's so open in America, homie. But the average employee is scared to say something. Sexual sexual harassment. It goes on all the time. Niggas in the break room talking about who they fucked over the weekend. I'm sitting over there eating. I don't want to hear that <laughs> shit. <laughs> nigga, I don't care about all them hoes, and you doing this every weekend? Well, at some point, I'm going to go to the HR lady and say, Larry and Leroy talking about women they sleep with every weekend, and they need to stop it. Well, guess what? They ain't going to stop it. And after I done, I done already complained about it, because you have to make a complaint and let them know that you are uncomfortable with this conversation. Say, man, I don't want to hear that, homie. They think I'm just being a bullshit-ass nigga. They don't know me. So I done let them know. So on January 2nd, at 12.30, lunch break, Larry and Leroy were talking about fucking Sheila. So I'm gonna keep documentation. So when I go to HR, I'm gonna let HR know. Now they gonna be fucking with me. Now I'm a snitch at work. So now they gonna be talking about me, making my work, work environment a hostile working environment. By this time, I'm going to the EEOC and get them. We gonna go to mediation, they gonna ask me what I want. Yeah, and then that's when you tell them what you want. It's so it's so easy to get. I ain't bullshit. And every time you tell them ten bands, well, uh, OSHA. Uh, uh. Anyway, you get the gist in it. You get the gist. You get the gist. Maybe if Tremaine had this sort of mindset, he may have got what he needed out of Supreme. But in the end, I guess it was um, a good thing. Each party kind of you know walked away in you know uh, different directions and stuff because I don't think it was a match really made in heaven. To be fair, the you know morals principles in the line. Um, Tremaine decided to walk away. Fair play. I don't really agree with the characterization of what happened, but again, I wasn't there, so you can't tell somebody how to feel about certain experiences. And I think for everybody anyway, myself included, it's a lesson learned about how to approach these positions, how to manage them, what to expect before you get, what before you go and work there. Um, and most importantly, it's kind of a very stark reminder that for the most part, most of us out there um, probably don't need those big corporate jobs because most of us probably don't know how to work in those big corporate industries with that kind of pressure, with that kind of like pushback, with that kind of oversight, uh, micromanagement. 
especially if you've been doing stuff on your own for a long time. It might look glitzy because you're going to get a consistent paycheck. Um, there's going to be good opportunities, but you're going to have to give up a lot. And some the stuff you're going to have to give up on a lot is very hard to swallow. Um, being told what to do when you've been running your own business for a long time, um, when you have you know particular ideas that you feel would go a particular way, it's just difficult to kind of hear somebody push back. So I feel like this should be a reminder for a lot of people to maybe think twice before they take those big roles especially if you've got your own thing going on um not all, not everything that shines you know not, not everything that glitters is fucking it's fucking beneficial for you the grass isn't always green on the other side and sometimes maybe slumming it out with your own brand um in the meantime is maybe a better long-term um you know thing to do than to run directly to the corporate jobs and those gigs and the illusion of fucking security because it comes with its own issues and own problems and own requirements and own stresses that some of us can handle some of us can't and i think you know you're probably better just you know handling your own thing and going from there really or knowing what you're walking into and addressing it accordingly because i think there is a talent um and a skill to knowing how to move in those spaces some of us don't have it some of us need to learn it but i think being aware of where you stand is the best way to kind of go about things so um you know safe journeys to tremaine on his travels now going forward i'm sure he'll be fine with Dead in Tears and all these other projects. And again, Supreme have also learned on what to do and what not to do if they hire a new creative director. It is what it is. I've heard through the grapevine and with something I threw out as a theory, I was saying that most likely a good option of somebody to kind of pull in might be a cactus plant flea market, cactus, cactus plant flea market, right? Um, that woman that does that. And from what I've heard, they're already working in-house at Supreme anyway, doing some bits and bobs. Um, I thought they would be a good option because of the range of stuff that they produce over the year for their own brand and collaborations and shit. They do flip and churn out a lot of things, even though I don't like what they do. But I've heard a lot of people of the, in that team or maybe that particular person, woman that founded that company is working in-house at Supreme. So, um, And I'd also imagine there's going to be a queue of people. I bet... James Jebbia's inbox and whoever's con involved in the HR of recruiting at Supreme, I bet their inbox is flooded with resumes from people who say, I will take that job. I would gladly not do a fucking, you know, slavery um, celebration t-shirt if that means I get the job. You know what I mean, there's plenty of people who would probably run and legitimately kill their own mother to get that role, which is the funny thing about it. So it kind of is what it is.